Brilliant innovation is activity, it's movement, it's hustle, it's enthusiasm, it's actually doing things substantially with your hands, it's actually measuring the strength, it's actually observing uh, the expert to do the strange chemical test. It's all of that and anything that interferes with that, anything that cuts the speed that you do things, destroys innovation. We were established to pursue innovation. Bill Gore was sort of an innovation, I'll call him an innovation nut. In the private life, he was innovating all of the time. We were founded with that kind of background. And the early associates were also terribly interested in innovation and change. What was happening in the enterprise that led you to be actually working on trying to make PTFE that had porosity? We were at a point where we were looking for something new, and we had a person from the industry, John Crow, who came in with a great idea for us getting into the thread sealant business. And so we made tape that was suitable for thread sealant, but he wanted to make a less expensive tape, and so he had an idea that if we stretch the tape, in this particular case, it would look essentially the same as unstretched tape. In other words, it didn't get narrower, it didn't get thinner, but it got porous. He thought that it would be just as good as the original tape, but we'd save a lot of uh, uh, material costs because we could stretch it, sell it for the same price, and there would be less PTFE, which is pretty expensive. So he got me to start to do some experiments, and he actually started to take orders in the industry for this new PTFE thread sealant tape. So orders were taken, but there was no product, is my understanding. Well, we made some product, and he had some samples. Uh, but when he took the orders, he took it for large quantity. <laughs> and so when we started to try to manufacture it in large quantity, when it would stretch, sometimes it would break. And so we had a very big production problem. We couldn't fill the order. What was your approach to moving forward? What were you thinking you would do? Well, first of all, you're talking about me, but it was quite a gang of people, perhaps, you know, 20, 30 people that were engaged in trying to fill this order. And we weren't having much luck. We'd bought a new machine that uh, supposedly would help us uh, make the order. And so we were trying to uh, get it to work. It isn't just equipment. You've got too many people around. So you've got some people having this idea, some people having that idea. Everybody had ideas, but we didn't figure out what was really making things work and not work. So I came to the lab one evening, and instead of working on thread sealant tape, I wanted to find out what were the fundamentals of stretching uncentered PTFE so that it would not break and it could stretch a long way. My entry is October 28th in this uh, lab notebook. So I had uh, made up some rods of PTFE, because I figured I didn't have to deal with complicated equipment. I could take these rods and uh, stretch them by hand. In my mind, I thought that it was important to stretch it very carefully so it wouldn't break. And it seemed like the more carefully I stretched it, the less I could stretch it before it just disintegrated and broke apart. And it was getting on towards 6 o'clock in the evening. Everybody had gone quite some time before, and I thought, well, I'm going to give you one last try. And I said, if you won't stretch slowly, you'll stretch fast. And I took the rod out of the oven and I gave it a jerk and stretched the whole length of my arms. And I was totally stunned, I couldn't, couldn't believe it. Well, nobody was in the plant at that time, everybody had gone home. So I just left everything as it was and I went on home. I didn't really talk to anybody about it. But I came back early in the morning and I redid the stretch experiment. And again, I could repeat it. It ended up that a very fast jerk, a very fast stretch allowed this to be stretched, not 100%, not even 200%, but maybe 500%, 1,000%. So there's nothing in the literature about stretching the PTFE 1,000%, and there's nothing that I had known before about uncentered PTFE being able to be stretched. So I started to bring people into the lab here and to show them the experiment, and they were totally amazed. And finally, I brought in John Crow, and he was delighted because now 
he could sell five thread sealant at a good price and we could make lots of money because there wasn't really much material there. It was mostly air. So that was basically this discovery, fast stretching. But almost immediately we realized that this new form of tape that we were selling for thread sealant also had uses in electronics because we were introducing air into the structure, gave the PTFE a very low dielectric constant. The excitement came with the wire and cable industry. The new tape that we made made things that we could make miniature, we could make things smaller, we could make signals transmit faster. It was also exciting to think about other forms. Eventually we could make very wide sheets. Now we began to think about all sorts of other applications. Particularly, we could make waterproof, breathable garments because this PTFE allowed air and moisture vapor to permeate through it, but it kept liquid water out because the nature of PTFE was such that drops of water could not permeate the porous structure, but the air, vapor, water vapor could diffuse through it. The discovery of the rod that I did, I thought, hey, maybe this is a new product. And so a round tubular rod about a quarter inch in diameter in stretched form, we called it joint sealant. And the question on that was, okay, how do you manufacture it? I could only do three feet by stretching it with my arms, but some of the people in production discovered that if two bit persons took one end of the rod and ran in opposite directions, they could stretch it much, much further. So they could run 20 feet apart, and it made a very puffy, soft kind of form in the stretched form. And we discovered that you could seal certain kinds of flat plates and things like that with this joint sealant. So this was a whole new product for us. What are your hopes for uh, innovation at Gore going forward for the associates in general, but I'm, I'm thinking also of a newer associate who's earlier in their career. What advice might you give them? Uh, Hands-on experiments are critical for us as, a, as a, an enterprise. Trying to get experiments done quickly with whatever is available is critical. I think that uh, the new people will find places where EPTFE can be used that we didn't think of. So we've got laboratories where people are looking at opportunities for medical products. Other people are looking at industrial applications. People who have knowledge about end use areas are finding new applications. So it's, it's very exciting. In the coming 50 years, what do you hope will happen at Gore in the way of innovation? Well, you know, when you say 50 years, it seems like such a long time. And yet it's been 50 years that we've been dealing with expanded PTFE. And that seems such a short time. You're always thinking that uh, tomorrow will be the day, uh, tomorrow will be the day that another experiment, another uh, new technology, something is going to happen. So my hopes are not for 50 years, my hopes are for a much shorter term than that. I think that the expanded PTFE still has lots of uh, end use applications. And I'm thinking that probably in the next year, uh, some exciting things are gonna happen. I couldn't be more excited about what an impact we can make on the world. We can take on bigger projects. We can make bigger changes. We can affect the world in a bigger way. And we want it to be in a positive way.